Welcome to day 14, Cisco CCNA in 60 days. The book's on Amazon if you want to grab a copy, it's version 4. Please subscribe to the channel so you see the other videos and hit the bell icon. So we're on day 14, yeah, it's wireless security. There's some other wireless stuff covered in the exam and that's on the free page which I'll show you in a minute. As always, read the cram guide. The link is on page 0 and page 1. Review yesterday's tasks. Uh, watch the videos uh, from yesterday. Watch today's videos. Take the online exam on the free link. Go to subnetting.org and do some subnetting or use the uh, 101 Labs book. Wi-Fi security. The bonus videos for configuring some wireless are on this page here. The reason is you actually need the wireless software and a wireless LAN controller to install it on. Packet Tracer won't give you access to the stuff that's covered in the exam. So uh, you could buy a cheap one off um, eBay if you wanted or just watch the videos because I think we cover pretty much what you need to know about the different levels available. I think there's platinum, silver and gold or something like that um, configurations. There's some books that will help you. 101 Labs IP subnetting, IP subnetting from zero to guru and 101 Labs Cisco CCNA, obviously. So um, that's all I've got to say for the introduction. We'll uh, go ahead and watch the video. Starting now. So welcome to our module on some wireless security concepts. WPA, WPA2, WPA3. Um, these are, well wireless is already, has been in the syllabus for a while, but just note the new stuff because uh, the new stuff tends to be focused on in exam questions. Uh, TKIP, RC4. CCMP AES, Advanced Encryption Security, EEP, Geofencing. We might have mentioned some of these elsewhere in the uh, lessons. Um, I'm, I'm creating multiple courses, so sorry if I can't be more specific. But um, just in case you see it somewhere else, there can be overlap. So I'm sure you're familiar with wireless networking. You're probably running one at home or you're using one on your phone when you're out and about. And obviously, this is a hot area for improvements in speed and security. The first uh, protocol was WEP, uh, Wide Equivalent Privacy. I really doubt that would be asked at all. I don't think it's even mentioned in the syllabus. It um, was almost useless, but it was, I suppose, better than nothing. From 2003, WPA was available. This is from the Wi-Fi Alliance. I'm sure you'll see their, um, you basically see the Wi-Fi logo on um, all products that are compliant. Now, some um, products are compliant, but they can't, or they don't want to pay because it costs a lot of money for the logo or the ability to use a logo. So um, that would answer you in your business. Uh, WPA uses uh, TKIP, Temporal Key Integrity Protocol, uh, 500 trillion key combinations. Uh, used within the um, with RADIUS in the enterprise network. Uh, uses encrypted hash and each packet has a unique, unique encryption key. WPA2 was obviously a big improvement uh, based on the 802.11 as all the WPA um, protocols are actually for security 802.11 this is 11i integrates with 802.1x which is a um, layer 2 security which we um, discuss elsewhere 
along with DHCP snooping etc. So your users and devices authenticate with uh, EAP which we'll talk about in a moment and um, you, so you use EAP and then you add one of the two authentication methods which we discuss um, elsewhere in the security sections. So RC4, which was used earlier, is replaced by the Advanced Encryption Standard 25, um, 256 bit and beyond. You've got to be careful in the exam because I think it's quite unfair, but they go into kind of a, a deep dive. And I, I'm not allowed to say specifically what, obviously, because of the non-disclosure. But they're going to ask which features or which services you would be using um, 128 bit and 256 so please go um check the cisco.com documentation also in addition to this course for the uh, configuration guides and what you can and can't use with what uh, tkip is replaced with uh, ccmp um uses an encrypted hash so WPA3 is mentioned also in the syllabus. This is in the uh, process of being adopted. You'll find that all devices will still in reality be using WPA2 because any device has to be built now to support the um, encryption protocols and services used by WPA3. So this obviously takes a while to be adopted. Now it replaces the um, pre-shared key, adding even better security, and instead we're using the simultaneous authentication of equals, which is SAE for short. So this is used instead. The uh, If you're using it on the enterprise, you obviously wouldn't pay for enterprise security for your home network. There's an optional 128-bit security, which you can turn on or off. There's three types of frames you'll need to know out, not really security related, but um, I only add this because WPA3 offers the protection and management frames on your um, wireless LAN. Um, so that's the one type. The first type is your data frame and the third type you'll see on a wireless network are control frames. You can obviously filter, this is an old wireless router I've got, just to show you that you can actually perform some sort of blocking, so you can enable it firstly, and then depending on how you want, you can, you've got many options obviously that you can turn on or off. So this is MAC address filtering, you can also do it on your uh, routers and Wi-Fi devices. You can use it with other uh, security in case of Mac spoofing, which I think again we talk elsewhere, but somebody's trying to um, allocate um, um, DHCP traffic or something else and misdirect traffic on your layer 2 network. EAP is worth mentioning. I think it could be asked about it in the exam. It's authentication framework, again used in Wi-Fi. There's a lot of types available, so uh, I think really it's worth going into the Cisco CyberOps course or the Compute Security Plus if you want to learn more. Uh, just note the types here that I've uh, put up on the screen. Obviously, anything that's uh, designed by Cisco, make extra um, notes about. This uses the secure TLS tunnel with, um, with SSL. Again, I'm only giving you hints about what I think would be more likely to come up. Um, TTLS, EAP, again, um, PEEP, you will hear mentioned a fair amount. Um, MS chat version 2, maybe, maybe not, but um, again, I've mentioned it here because it comes with an, um, under the umbrella of EAP. Sorry, I didn't put the uh, slides in to uh, float in. Uh, PSK, I've mentioned this again because I think it's important you know for the exam. There's a shared um, data nugget between devices here before communication can actually take place. Um, so uh, it's used in WEP, WPA, um, WPA PSK or WPA2 PSK is used for wireless. Also, um, we've, in the earlier slides, we've mentioned EAP. Now the key is usually when you're configuring your, say you've got a GUI and you've turned on 
and PSK. So you've got PSK here, then other options will appear. They'll be grayed out, and then when you tick on PSK, you'll be able to tick where one or two. It's worth noting that uh, the key is usually a password, a passphrase, or you can use a hexadecimal string, depending on how you're configuring your security. If you turn this on for the Cisco devices, WPA2, and you choose pre-shared key as opposed to a different option, then the key format could be either um, ASCII or it could be in a hexadecimal format. Again, it's worth remembering this kind of stuff. Uh, Geofencing, this is just a general security uh, concept. You can find it inside your software. It uses GPS or your radio to define your geographical boundaries. There's triggers for devices entering or exiting the uh, network. All right, so we've covered a few things. Um, again, I'm just trying to cover all bases. I mentioned if you're watching this on the website, you need to be using the extra free wi uh, wireless resources I've put on the free page and the link is on the uh, same page that this video is on. There's so many things that could come up in the exam. And again, I've mentioned it's a hot topic, so um, please learn it all.